And that's what God did for us. He covered us. So when God looks at us, He doesn't see us. He sees His Son. Now drop down to verse 16. So, 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 so you can go and watch the Super Bowl. I cease not to give mention to you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Listen to Paul's prayer. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Now, that's old English. That's King James descriptive vernacular. I, I didn't know my understanding had eyes. I, I didn't know that my soul could see. Amen. Zing. Some, 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 some of you 
you have been forced into things that was not intended for you. And you won't know that you abused until you know your purpose. Until you know what God created you for. Paul pa praise, Paul praise, Paul praise. That your eyes be enlightened. That your soul might see. That you will know what God created you for. I don't care what nobody says, you are more than what they say you are. Amen. You can do more than what they say you can do. You can have more than what they say you can have. You are only limited by your lack of knowledge of who you are. God, 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 help me with, with the hope of my calling. Help me, help me with the hope of my calling. Help me to know why I'm here. Those of you, those of you, those of you who have, have known me for a long time know that I did everything in the church. I sang on the choir. I ushered on the board. I cleaned the church. I cut the grass. I was a trustee. Although I had talent in all of those areas, that was not the focus. It was not the focus because it was not what I was supposed to do. I was born to do this. I was born to preach. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I, I, I was born to do this. Uh, for this purpose, uh, I came into the world uh, and I when I'm doing this. Uh, I could be doing something else, uh, but I would be at my best doing something else. Uh, this is the wind beneath my wings. Uh, when I'm doing this, I fly high. Once, once, once you know your purpose, all the distractions and abuse and criticism don't matter. Because, because you know why God created you. He wants you to know what is the riches of his inheritance in the saints. Paul says, Paul says, I pray that you would know that God's inheritance is in you. If you don't hear anything else I say this morning, hear this. God's inheritance is embedded in your clay body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm right about it because Paul says later on, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. There is something in you worth saving. Now, 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 now you got to find out what it is. There is something rich. There's, there's a rich thing inside of you. There's something in you uh, that nobody else can do like you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made. Uh, there will never ever be another you. Uh, nobody in the whole world has your fingerprints. Uh, yeah. Not only that, nobody has ever had your fingerprints. Uh, out of all the people who have lived down through the ages, uh, none of them have had your fingerprints. Uh, you are in a category all by yourself. Uh, there will never ever be uh, another you. Uh, there are things that you can do that nobody else can do because nobody else thinks like you. Nobody else creates like you. 
down in you that God has invested in you and he didn't invest that in anybody else and you can bet one thing for sure God's going to protect his inheritance or he's going to do it because at the end of the day God is a businessman <laughs> and he's not going to lose his investment uh, God has invested in you uh, and you owe it to yourself uh, to not die without finding out uh, what it is uh, that God has invested in you I got you we got to go on so we can take communion and, and have our meeting and, uh, and go look at the Super Bowl. So, so can I go on? Somebody say, go on, preacher. Oh. The third thing, the third thing Paul prayed for is that you would know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. That's my fault. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? God has never had a question that he could not answer. God has never wanted anything that he couldn't create. He has exceeding power, I tell you. The boredom of living in eternity without a clock made him create time. Watching eternity pass without time, he stepped out on nothing and started speaking stuff into existence. He opened up his mouth and cleared his throat and said, let there be. And it became what he said because he's God. He never tells a lie. As a matter of fact, the Bible says uh, he 